So a lot of things happening over the next couple of weeks. I mean, we're watching the the slow dissolution of the uh, Democratic uh, infrastructure proposal as um, all the talk that we heard after the uh, Democrats won in uh, 2000, or excuse me, in 2020, that um, the uh, squad was a liability, et cetera, et cetera. And now we're watching a bunch of corporate Dems who are servicing only really corporations. I mean, let's be honest here. Is there really a voting constituency? I don't care how purple your district is. That is in favor of higher price prescription drugs. I mean, that's, you know, that's the question. And did Joe uh, Manchin and his daughter have their own district? <laughs> well, exactly. And, and it's not just Joe Manchin and, and Kristen Cinema. There are um, three Democrats in the House who have been uh, written about extensively who are able to take down, apparently, this prescription uh, drug element of this bill, which is uh, so that Medicare and the government can can negotiate rates for prescription drugs, the savings of which were going to be used to expand benefits for uh, Medicare subscribers, I guess, uh, and perhaps drop the age of who is eligible for Medicare. We should also tell you that when you start talking about Medicare providing dental, for people ages 65 and over, the um, the healthcare providers, the hair on their back starts uh, going up because they start thinking like, oh, well, if we're negotiating with Medicare, we're going to lose money. And that's basically the dynamic that uh, that's going on here. Now, we'll see uh, what happens. But, you know, uh, we know that there are at least 17 Democrats who have publicly committed to not voting for the bipartisan bill if the reconciliation bill is not there at that time. And there has, as far as we know, not enough Republicans to essentially um, defang that threat. Right. And so... And just vote for the bipartisan bill. Ex to, exactly. To decouple it. It would be a smart strategy for them to do that but i, I mean I, I don't think they have enough they're too extreme and wanting to oppose everything that biden is putting forward yeah and i think i think look um at this point the progressives should hold their ground and and sink this stuff and make everybody uh pay for this situation <clears throat> because um we're in you know that zone where if we cannot get uh a, an entire sandwich right now accepting a quarter of the sandwich is not enough here's joe biden uh delivering remarks about his economic plan at the white house and really what he should be doing it seems to me is calling out these uh, democrats in the house and in the senate by name and asking bring one of your constituents over who's looking for higher price prescription drugs bring them to the white house we'll give them a tour that's what i'd like to hear him say Months ago, 55 of the most profitable corporations in America paid zero in federal income taxes on what amounted to $40 billion in profit. Not a penny. That's not right. My economic plan will change that. Not punish anybody, just make them pay their fair share. But my Republican friends in Congress don't want to change the law. <clears throat> so what are they doing? They're attacking me and my plan, which is fine. But if you're going to have a debate, let's have an honest debate. My Republican friends are attacking my plan, saying it's big spending. Let me remind you, these are the same folks who just four years ago passed the Trump tax cut, totaling almost $2 trillion in tax cuts, a giant giveaway to the largest corporations in the top 1%. And listen to this. Almost none of that $2 trillion tax cut was paid for. It just ballooned the federal deficit. In fact, the unpaid, unpaid bills ranked up, uh, racked up by the, uh, the last administration 
are projected to increase the national debt by more than $8 trillion over time. What I'm proposing is totally different from that approach for three reasons. First, my plan is paid for. It's fiscally responsible because our investments are paid for by making sure that corporations, wealthy Americans pay their fair share. Second, we're not going to raise taxes on anyone making under $400,000. That's a lot of money. Some of my liberal friends are saying it should be lower than that. But only corporations and people making over $400,000 a year are going to pay any additional tax. And third, not only will no one making under $400,000 see their taxes go up, the middle class are going to get some tax cuts, some breaks. My plan benefits ordinary Americans, not those at the top who don't need the help. It's a historic middle class tax cut, cutting taxes for over 50 million families. Uh, personally, I think all this rhetoric is pretty stale. You're right. And it's all stuff that we hear before. It's completely boilerplate stuff. You've um, never heard middle class tax cut before? <laughs> um, the um, it, it, one wonders who the, who this who this is for at this point. Um, like I say, none of this is um, is is new. And the only thing that even sounded even remotely uh, decent in that, and it comes way too late. Why have they not been running against the Trump tax cuts? Even if you're going to say we're going to get rid of we're, the, the Trump tax cuts were irresponsible. We're going to get rid of all of them except the ones that tax people under, you know, uh, that would increase taxes under 400,000. Donald Trump is singularly unpopular uh, in this country by at least the majority of people. Kristen Cinema, why are you in that, uh, advocating for keeping the Trump tax cuts in Arizona, a state that is like the exact kind of demo right now that this Democratic Party is targeting of, you know, uh, suburbanite types voting against Donald Trump? And if you want it, if you're worried about your four hundred thousand dollar one, you say the Trump, the, the, the Trump wealthy tax cuts. The Trump rich tax cuts, whatever it is, come up with somebody, spend some of that money and figure out what the Trump tax cuts for the rich. Yeah, right. right, Exactly. Right. I mean, that's it. And uh, but um, uh, it just there is a real feeling that the um, that uh, actually doing politics uh, at the White House seems to have been taking a back seat. I mean, you know, if there's been an inside game, we're not seeing any of the uh, we're not seeing any of the um, why um, do politics when we can just fall back on the beautiful uh, path forward of Senate procedure? That there you seems go. to be the only thing he's committed to in this area. All right. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be talking to Astra Taylor on the uh, 10 year anniversary of Occupy Wall Street. Folks, there's more of what you've just saw where that came from. That's if you hit the subscribe and like button. Thank you. Really, thank you.